I welcome you all to this session of thermal engineering basic and applied and today we shall discuss about the alternative fuels. In the last class we have talked about the self ignition characteristics of the fuel, we have also discussed about the fuels for both SI and CI engines. So, if we you know discuss today briefly again what we had uh, discussed in the last class is this self ignition characteristics. So, before going to discuss this part today again, let us first draw the schematic of two engines that is SI and CI that will this is top dead center and this is bottom dead center and for this SI engine the name itself suggests that spark plug will be there and if we draw similarly the compression ignition engine have fuel nozzle. So, that is used to spray fuel into the combustion chamber. Fuel nozzle. So, for the SI engine through the intake manifold we take charge that is air plus fuel mixture. So, this is charge, but for the CI engine only fresh air is taken into the cylinder during intake stroke. So, this is only air. Now, we have discussed so many times that whether it is the charge that is air fuel mixture that is occup I know that air fuel mixture is you know they are inside the combustion chamber or if it is only air for the CI engine that is what is we have discussed in the last a few classes. The air or air fuel mixture will be compressed during compression stroke. Now, for the SI engine during compression stroke that is compression heating the temperature of the air fuel mixture will be increased. Similarly, temperature of the air also will increase during compression heating and towards the end of the compression stroke we need to supply fuel through fuel nozzle. The you know temperature which is developed during compression heating of the air fuel mixture or air is very important. That temperature for the compression ignition engine that is the principle of the compression ignition engine should be higher than the self ignition temperature of the fuel itself. So, what is the self ignition temperature? That is the temperature at which fuel will auto ignite, self ignite. So, that is why the word you know self ignition is there. So, that means compression heating that rise in temperature due to compression heating should be such that it should be higher than the 
temperature which is required to auto ignite or self ignite the fuel for the CI engine and that is the principle of the compression ignition engine. Now, for the CI for the SI engines that temperature is also having an important role. So, we have you know agreed undoubtedly that the self ignition temperature is very important for the CI engines because this temperature should be known before a particular fuel is selected for the engine right for, for the of course, for the CI engines because the rise in temperature due to compression heating should be higher than the self ignition otherwise what will happen you know that the mixture will simply cool off it will not take part in the combustion. On the other hand, so we are claiming that the self ignition temperature SIT. So, self ignition temperature or SIT, this is very important for the CI engine, but it is also important for the SI SI engines. Why? Because you know that if the self, if we do not know about this particular property of the fuel, then what will happen? If the self ignition temperature of the fuel that is being used for the SI engine is very less, then we may not require even spark plug to ignite the fuel. So, what will happen? You know that we are using spark plug, that means we are not going to utilize the self ignition uh, property of the fuel. So, the fuels which are normally used for the SI engines are having low self ignition temperature and that is why this external agent is uh, needed. Question is if you do not know about this particular property of the fuel even for the SI engines then it would be very fatal for the you know engine operation. Let us discuss briefly on that. So, you know uh, if the temperature rise during compression heating is above the self ignition temperature of the fuel which is used for this particular SI engine, then one flame front will come from the from the spark plug because pass, spark plug is there. So, spark plug will you know ignite the fuel which is there you know closer to this region. So, the compressed mixture would be there and the compressed, compressed mixture which is there you know in the vicinity of the spark plug will be ignited first due to the spark plug and then the flame will be the flame will propagate across the combustion chamber and the entire charge will be combusted. But if the self ignition temperature is very less may be the rise in rise in temperature due to compression heating will allow the fuel which is there even at the farthest location of the uh, from the spark plug will also ignite and the resultant effect would be abrupt rise in pressure and that too that is kind of you know very uh, chaotic. So, abnormally pressure will be developed inside the combustion chamber and the pressure pulses will cause the damage of engine and several parts of the engine. And this is very undesirable uh, to the I, I, I mean this is this is not a desirable for the you know smooth operation of the engine because the rise in pressure would be so high and it would be abnormal. So, it will create an audible noise alongside several other effects like you know that you know damaging of several parts of the engine and the entire phenomenon is known as knock. So, to prevent the knock of the SI engines knowledge about the self ignition temperature is equally important. Though it is highly important for the CI engines because the principle of the CI engine is based on the you know kind of self ignition property of the fuel. But we have also understood that it is also or equally important for the SI engines because to prevent an undesirable phenomenon which is known as knock. So, if we go to the next slide we have discussed that. So, we have understood that the fuel property that describes about the self ignition characteristics of the fuel. In other words, the fuel property which describes 
how well a fuel will ignite or will not ignite is very important, right. So, let us briefly discuss about the graph that we had discussed in the last class that is the time, this is temperature. So, we had seen if we consider a particular fuel and if we assume this is the self ignition temperature SIT. So, this is self ignition temperature of that fuel and if we uh, compress the fuel uh, for the CI engine of course, the if we compress the air or for the SI engine if it is the charge that is air fuel mixture and if we compressed the charge or air during compression heating you can understand that with time temperature will increase. If the temperature of that particular uh, temperature rise because of that compression is less than the self ignition temperature then fuel will or the mixture will simply cool off and it will not take part in the combustion. On the other hand if we if I use another case and if I represent another case where the self ignition temperature is above the cell you know the rise in temperature due to compression heating is greater than the self ignition temperature. So, this is the you know uh, rise in temperature above the self ignition temperature. So, understand this is the rise in temperature above SIT and then self ignition will start over here at that point and we have discussed about the ignition delay. So, this is the ignition delay or I d and then this is the rise in temperature due to combustion, right. So, self ignition starts here, it is because of this ignition delay eventually combustion the entire combustion will start from here and then we can see that abrupt rise in temperature. And this ignition delay that is that is having two different components, one is physical delay, another is chemical delay, these two delay together these two delays together from the ignition delay and what will happen you know that if we can make sure that the rise in temperature of the mixture or of, of the air due to compression should be even larger than the self ignition temperature. So, if I consider another case then we can see that the ignition delay period is reducing. So, this is the ignition delay 2 right and this is ignition delay 1 right. So, basically two things are very important one is self ignition temperature another is ignition delay. So, this is the ignition delay and this is the self ignition temperature. Right. So, these two are very important to know about any particular type of fuel before we use that fuel for the combustion of internal combustion inter, you know IC engines. Now, the prediction of SIT or I D that is self ignition temperature and I D for any you know given air fuel for any given air fuel mixture is ambiguous, because it is not fixed it depends on so many factors like pressure, temperature, swirl, turbulence so many things. So, a perfect knowledge about the ignition delay is also very important for the compression ignition engine because we are going to utilize the self ignition or auto ignition property. So, 
we had seen that the self ignition temperature together with the knowledge about ignition delay is very important because these two things are are very important for the you know efficient and smooth combustion of smooth combustion in CI engines compression ignition engines. So, as I told you that even for a given air fuel mixture these two quantities are not you know fixed rather ambiguous it depends on so many factors I have already told you. So, what next we will be discussing today is the two important numbers what you have understood till now that the fuel property that describes how well a particular fuel will self ignite or will not ignite right. So, let me write here is so try to understand if we talk about C i engine compression ignition engine compression ratio is fixed we are increasing the temperature of air during compression heating and then we are discharging or we are spraying fuel into the combustion chamber. At that prevailing, prevailing condition whether the combustion will be completed or combustion will be initiated that depends on a property right. So, basically which is that property that means whether the fuel will ignite or will not ignite because we are not having any external agent to ignite the fuel for the CI engines. So, the fuel property that describes how well a particular fuel will ignite or will not ignite is known as octane number. So, today we will be defining two different number one is octane number or simply octane or octane. What is this? So, this is the number which is used to describe the property of a fuel which which indicates whether uh, whether that fuel will self ignite or not right. So, this is very important. So, the fuel property that describes how well a fuel will ignite or will not ignite right is the octane number right. So, octane number is defined as the fuel property that describes how well a fuel will ignite or not ign or will not ignite. Now, question is so if you would like to have this number for any fuel any test fuel may be that fuel will be used for the SI engine or CI engine. So, to know this the number to know the numerical value of this number of any test fuel what we need to do we need to compare that fuel what we need to compare we need to compare the self ignition characteristics or self ignition property of the test fuel to that of the uh, to that of two standard fuels. So, that means for any fuel if you would like to designate the octane number if you would like to define or if you would like to identify the octane number what we need to do is we need to test that particular fuel and we need to compare the self ignition characteristics of that test fuel to that of two standard fuels for which we already know the octane number. So, this octane number the numerical value of a test fuel. So, octane number this is a numerical value. 
So, the numerical value of a test fuel is obtained by comparing by comparing it to that of by comparing the comparing it I am again writing this what is this it comparing the self ignition characteristics. So, this is the self ignition characteristics. Okay. So, the self ignition characteristics to that of two standard fuels. Again, I am underlining these words two standard fuels. What are those standard fuels? So, two standard fuels are you know iso octane So, that means, we can compare rather we can predict the numerical or octane we can predict the octane number of any test fuel if we compare the self ignition characteristics of that fuel with the self ignition characteristics of any I mean of two standard fuels, because we know the octane number of these two standard fuels. So, iso octane you know uh, that is iso octane whose octane number is equal to 100 and another is n heptane and whose octane number is 0. So, that means, we are considering two extreme values of octane number. We are considering one fuel n heptane whose octane number is 0 and you are also considering another octane number which another fuel whose octane number is 100 and if we compare any test fuel rather if we go for testing of considering that particular fuel in a you know given uh, or specific stress engine and specific condition. So, basically say we would like to have the octane number of any fuel x. So, we can consider that fuel x, we can take that fuel for testing in a specified condition in a specific engine and we can compare with the octane number of with this uh, of that fuel with these two standard fuels and we can generate the numerical data. So, this is the octane number. So, similarly you know this is so basically you can see that iso octane is having octane number 100 while the n heptane is having octane number 0. So, let me write here. So, octane number simply octane and this is also known as O n. So, octane number 100 and octane number 0. So, what is the physical significance of this number? Higher the octane number less likely the fuel will self ignite. So, that means, if the fuel is having higher octane number it is less likely that the fuel will self ignite. So, if I now ask a question for the compression ignition engine or CI engines the fuel will be having higher octane number or low, lower octane number or lesser octane number. So, the fuel which will be used for the CI engines must have higher octane number because since the if the octane number since the higher octane number so the fuel with higher octane number is having less tendency to self ignite right. Because you know for the compression ignition engine we are having higher compression ratio. So, the rise in temperature due to compression heating would be a rise in temperature of the air due to compression heating would be higher and if you are using a particular fuel that at that temperature fuel will self ignite 
then it will you know lead to uh, knock that I have discussed already. So, that is why to prevent knocking CI engines are preferred I mean the fuel which is having higher octane number are preferred for the CI engines. So, higher octane number let me write over here. So, I can write here that higher octane number fuel with higher octane number is used for you know which is very very important for higher compression ratio engine higher you know uh, compression ratio engines since CI engine CI engines are having higher compression ratio. So, naturally the fuels which will be used or those will be used for the CI engines you know uh, must have higher octane number because we can prevent the detonation. So, this is very important that means it simply indicates low compression ratios can use engines of low compression ratio can use low octane number fuel, fuel with lower octane number right. So, this is very important. So, now if we go to the next part that is you know what we have discussed today that if we go back to the previous slide here. So, you know that we are supplying fuel into the combustion chamber and the compressed air temperature is such that the moment at which fuel is supplied it will uh, you know that the combustion will initiate and combustion will be completed uh, within the uh, stipulated time. Now, question is so for the selection of fuel typically for CI engines a knowledge about the you know uh, ignition at precise time is very important. So, basically you know that we are compressing air and towards the end of the compression stroke nozzle is uh, uh, I mean fuel is supplied into the combustion chamber through the nozzle and then entire fuel uh, will mix with the air and combustion will be completed. So, what is most important for the CI engine is that if I write here that for the CI engines which is very important is that self ignition is you know a uh, necessity self ignition is a necessity now that means it indicates that so which is important the fuel will be selected right such that it will self ignite at a proper time at a 
at a proper time right that means which indicates that knowledge and control of the id or ignition delay is very important right so if we had seen that higher the rise in temperature above the self ignition temperature shorter is the ignition delay right if shorter is the ignition delay we can have you know very quick you know rise in i mean very very uh, quick uh, completion of the combustion and this is desirable. So, for the CI engines in which self ignition is a necessity, we must have a knowledge and control over the ignition delay to ensure that combustion is completed smoothly and that too quickly. Now, we cannot even select any particular fuel for the CI engines unless we know that that is suitable. So, that means again unlike the octane number, there is another number which is called as Seaton number, which is used to you know describe about the ignition delay about a particular fuel. So, the what I had written over here is that the knowledge and control of ignition delay is necessary and this property the pro, you know this is very important the property that quantifies this particular you know aspect is the certain number. So, for any fuel we must know about the ignition delay as I told you that ignition delay even for a given air fuel mixture is very ambiguous it depends on so many things. So, the property that you know provides or that quantifies about the ignition delay of a fuel is the certain number. So, let me write over here again. So, certain number or C n that is, so is the number. So, basically the this number quantifies the id of a fuel that is ignition delay of a fuel. So, this is not only the ignition delay, but also about the knowledge. So, this is the certain number. So, you know the certain number again if you would like to have for any particular fuel this is a, this is again a numerical number and if we need to go for the calculation of certain number of any particular fuel, we need to compare the ignition delay of that particular fuel with two standard fuels. So, again we need to take the test fuel for testing in a specific engine in a specified conditions and we need to compare the ignition delay to that of two standard fuels and then we can generate this numerical number. So, the certain number of any fuel is what are the two standard fuels? So, two standard fuels are used to you know generate the numerical value of C n of any test fuel and what are these what are those you know standard fuels one is N C 10 
that is n c 10 plus you know the c 10 number is this c 10 number is 100 and another one is heptamethyl hepta methyl nonen. So, this is having you know c 10 number 15. So, it is having c 10 number equal to 15. So, that means it is not 0. So, we should be taken uh, this is n c 10 that is having c 10 number 100 and this is heptamethyl nonen which is having c 10 number 15. So, it is not a fuel which is having c 10 number equal to 0. right? So, this is multiplied with. So, if I write here, if I write here, plus 0 0.15 that is because of its certain number. So, these are to the true standard fuels. Okay. So, we have talked about the you know kind of self ignition characteristics of a fuel and also we have tried to understand why this particular property of the fuel is very important even for both the engines C i and S i engines. And finally, we could define two important numbers that is the octane number and ctane number and these two numbers the new the you know knowledge about or the you know uh, numerical value of these two numbers are very important to know about the self ignition properties as well as the you know knowledge about the ignition delay and the knowledge about the ignition delay as well as self ignition property is very important to select any particular type of fuel for any particular engine for its you know smooth operation as well as to prevent the undesirable phenomenon like knock. So, now finally, we shall discuss about the alternative fuels. Question is we have talked about the gasoline in the last class, right? So, you know keeping in mind the possible scarcity together with the cost associated with the gasoline extraction, uh, effort has been taken to explore several avenues of the alternative fuels. Though attempts have been taken to modify the design to bring the fuel economy, even then you know the dwindling supplies of the gasoline you know allows to figure out several alternative fuels. So, today we shall discuss about two alternative fuels which are you know also used not in a you know purely uh, you know in, in a pure form, but in a in in you know in in blended form with you know different uh, proportion with gasolines. So, one is alcohol. So, here we will be having methanol, ethanol and another one is hydrogen right so you know the uh, methanol ethanol we have talked about normal paraffins so if we recall and if we replace one hydrogen atom with the hydroxyl group so we will be get we will be getting alcohol so alcohols like methyl alcohol or ethyl alcohol that is methanol and ethanol as well as hydrogen they are you know they are used as an alternative as alternative fuels for the 
uh, internal combustion engines. Now, question is when you are talking about alcohols or hydrogen, certainly if we try to recall in the last class we have talked about the limitations of you know gaseous fuel. One is the storage and also there is a possibility of having you know leakage. So, if we now try to discuss about the you know advantages as well as disadvantages of alcohol as well as hydrogen. So, why not you know alcohol is purely used is used in a pure form or even though hydrogen hydrogen is having you know promising potential to be used as an alternative fuel, but even then why it is not so used you know even uh, with the advent of new, new technology. So, what I will be doing I will be writing you know several advantages and disadvantages of um, alternative fuel. So, first we start up talk about you know this uh, uh, alcohols. So, alcohols right. If we write the advantages first, number one is you know uh, this is available in plenty both naturally and manufactured form. Second is it is having high octane number. We have talked that if a particular fuel is having high octane number that means, it has less tendency to self ignite and this is good for the engines having higher compression ratios. That means, uh, it has if we even if we use that particular fuel for the engines having higher compression ratio tendency of having knock is not there. High octane number and then most importantly low emission and low sulfur content and you know finally, which is very important is that when burned gives more moles of exhaust more moles of exhaust right that is it simply indicates more power output. So, when burned it gives more moles of exhaust. So, pressure will be more definitely power output will be more. So, all these are you know advantages if we use alcohol as an alternative fuel, but at the same time we cannot deny several disadvantages as well. What are those? So, if I write alcohols. What are those? Low energy content if we compare a particular alcohol with the gasoline then definitely the energy content of alcohol is less almost half uh, than that of the gasoline and one serious disadvantage is that more aldehyde 
emission right it is because of this chemical structure of the alcohol and it is also more corrosive than gasoline on several materials like copper aluminum brass so it is having more corrosive you know nature than gasoline you know uh, on several materials like copper aluminum and brasses so these are the several disadvantages so now if we look at the you know hydrogen the promising potential of hydrogen as a fuel as an alternative fuel. So, we write again first we can write the advantages it is having again high octane number so we have already discussed about the benefit of having high octane number of any particular fuel then low emission right and finally, fuel availability. We can again have natural sources, we also can get hydrogen through the electrolysis of water. So, the availability, emission as well as high octane number, all these are basically you know low emission, particularly NOx emission can be kept at a very low level. So, NOx can be kept at a very low level. So, this is very important you know advantage of hydrogen to be used as a as an alternative fuel. But at the same time, we cannot deny several disadvantages. What are those? So, if I write over here only, uh, this is in line with what we have discussed in the beginning of yesterday's class that is storage uh, issue that is you know uh, heavy and bulky storage right and fuel can detonate as well. Number 3 is low you know poor volumetric efficiency. right poor volumetric efficiency because to burn certain amount of hydrogen to get equal amount of power we need you know huge amount of air so this is in a way and this is this is this is in a way uh, not uh, so, basically heavy and bulky storage fuel can detonate poor volumetric efficiency that I already told that it is it is if we use hydrogen then to get you know certain amount of power if we compare with gasoline then we need to supply huge amount of oxygen. So, that 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 simply indicates that it is having poor volumetric efficiency and also it is difficult to refuel.
right. So, all these are the disadvantages. So, having several advantages, we also could write several disadvantages as well. So, though hydrogen is having promising potential, you know, for an alternative, I mean, as an alternative fuel, but we also can see today that still it is having several disadvantages. Attempts are, you know, taken, still, you know, research is going on for efficient use of hydrogen. Most important concern is the storage, so that, you know, gasoline can be replaced by this particular uh, fuel and we can bring fuel economy. So, to summarize today's discussion, we have talked about the self ignition characteristics of the fuel, then we could define two important numbers and the numerical value of these two numbers is very important to select a particular fuel for any particular type of engine. Finally, we could discuss about the alternative fuels which are typically used for the internal combustion engines. So, with this I stop here today and we shall continue our discussion in the next class. Thank you. Thank you.